Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I'm going to be talking about the ultimate setup for Gran Turismo 7 and the PS5. Now that PlayStation has revealed their VR2 for Gran Turismo 7, I feel like it's the perfect time to get a sim rig. First, let me take you through what components I have here to make the sim rig. You of course will need a PlayStation 5 digital or disc edition. After that, you'll need Gran Turismo 7 and the VR2 goggles. You of course can play without the VR, you can get some monitors but for this video, we're gonna be talking about the VR. You will then need a steering wheel, pedals, and a shifter. And the most important thing to put all this together is the actual frame itself. This is the Track Racer TR120 Sim Rig. Essentially, it is a frame that keeps everything together, and it's what really makes this feel like a real car. Without this, you really don't get the experience. I have tried the steering wheel and the pedals on my table over there, and it just doesn't feel the same. Being in a driving position like a real car really gets you immersed into the game. Now, there are many different options when it comes to sim rigs and frames, but the ones that always get talked about as being the best ones are the ones that are made of aluminum profile. And it's because they are extremely sturdy, they don't flex, and they're very customizable. You can essentially adjust this in any way you want, and that's the best part about it. I have my Honda S2000 over there, and I wanted to make this exactly the same as my S2000s. And I was easily able to do that because everything is adjustable. From the seat, the steering wheel, the pedals, and even the shift that can be moved around in any angle you want or any position you want. I would consider this sim rig as a pro setup due to its quality, how sturdy it actually is, and what it's able to do. Here I have mounted the new Logitech G Pro wheel and pedals, which has 11 Nm of torque, which is quite powerful. But to no surprise, it did not flex the frame at all. To be honest, I'm pretty sure this would handle at least two to three times more power before you feel any flex in this frame. Before we start talking about this amazing track racer frame, I have to say, if you've never played for sim rig and you're used to playing for controller and a TV in front of you, this really is two worlds apart. And once you experience something like this, you really won't want to go back. I love how the aluminum profile on this rig is all painted black, so it looks really nice. There are many different wheel plates to choose from, depending on what type of wheel you have. If you have a Thrustmaster, Fanatec, or a SimCube, there are different options to choose from where the steering wheel can mount from the side. I've chosen to go for the standard plate with this one here. With the Logitech base, there are three mounting holes on the bottom, two at the back and one at the front. The base steering wheel plate here from Track Racer has many mounting holes, so you can pretty much bolt up anything you want. I have found that with this Logitech base, I can bolt up the two rear ones, but the front one doesn't really have a hole for it. So I have chosen to use Logitech's table clamp to secure this. The pedals also have many different mounting options. The base configuration comes with a standard plate where you put your pedals on top. I've chosen to go for the inverted option here where you can choose to put your pedals upside down. So essentially it becomes like a real car. The plate itself is completely adjustable. So you can move the height up and down. You can even angle it in any angle you like or you can move it back and forwards however you want. There really is no limit here. And of course, you can lower the plate down and use it like a standard plate as well. Track Racer does provide two different options for shift amounts. There is a short option and a long arm option. Right here, we have the long arm option, which means that you can slide the shifter essentially anywhere down up to here. Moving things around is really easy. You just need a Allen key. You just unscrew it and you basically just drag it around and tighten it up. It would probably take about 30 seconds to readjust this if I wanted to. The shifter mount can be installed on either side of the frame. Track Racer also offers many different seats when it comes to the sim rig. They have their reclinable seats, and I think they come in two different colors. There is also a GT style seat that wraps around your head. And then there is the rally seat, which is the one that I chose. I absolutely love this seat. It looks great and it's very comfortable. And for the price, you can't go wrong. The seat itself is made out of fiberglass, and at the front, you've got leather and Alcantara style leather. So visually, it is very appealing. It's a seat that I would even be happy to have in my real car. The padding on the seat can be removed. If you want to wash it or clean it, it's stuck down by Velcro strips. And that also goes for the back section here as well. You can pull that out whenever you like. The seat can be adjusted in many different ways. First of all, it's on rails. So it can be moved just like a real car, forwards and backwards. It has a, a rail slider here. You pull it up just like any other car and you can move front and back. And there's a lot of adjustment here, so it will just about fit anybody. The seat mount and the rails that it's sitting on is great because you can adjust the seat in height or in the angle. You get about three points of adjustment here. And it's maybe about two inches in, uh, in adjustment. So you can go a bit more back or you can tilt it 
And of course, if you have your own bucket seat, you can bolt it up straight away if it has side mounting. But best of all, the seat really doesn't flex at all. Even under heavy braking, there is no movement in the seat itself. The rally seat only comes in black and it supports up to 160 kilograms, as well as a 42 inch waist size. Myself, I'm a 32 inch waist size and I find that I still have plenty of space in here and it is very comfortable. I can imagine that if you wear 42 inches and 160 kilos, this would be a pretty tight fit. So I might recommend going with the reclinable seats as that wouldn't have so much restriction around the sides. Track Racer offers many options for mounting monitors. Usually if you're on a PC, you would want one, two, three monitors to get immersed. And they have an option for all of that. Even I think I saw four monitors, so you can even do that. All of that would man up right here to the aluminium frame. For this setup, we're going to be using the VR2 goggles. The graphics on them is unbelievable and the immersion is just next level. There is no complaints there at all. Apart from the fact that if you play really long periods of time, you might start feeling motion sickness. And for that reason, I might recommend getting a display for this type of setup. So that way you can switch between VR and a display just to give your eyes a bit of a break. I somewhat highly doubt that you would like to play an endurance race for hours on VR. If you're into PC sim racing, Track Racer has 30 different options for accessories. So you can mount just about anything here, like fans, keyboard, mice, and other peripherals. The other thing I'm excited about is the Track Racer says that this rig is ready for motion. It will simply adapt to each corner of the frame and you'll be ready to go. This would really take things to a whole nother level. The base configuration for this Track Racer frame is $829. For that, you get the frame, a standard wheelbase, and the pedal mounts, but you don't get the seat or the shifter mount. To have the same configuration that I have here with the rally seat, the shifter mounts, and the inverted pedals, you're looking at around 1,400 Australian dollars, which I think is a really good price considering how good the quality is and how long this will last. Let's go through a few pros and cons of this whole sim rig. We will start off with the pros, and the number one has to be how adjustable this all is. Like I mentioned before, you can literally choose any position you want to sit in. I've made mine to be identical to my Honda S2000 with the seat position, the pedals, even the shifter. Number two has to be that there is no flex at all. Even with this Logitech Pro steering wheel and 11 Nm of torque, there really is no flex at all. And this is a quite powerful steering wheel. And third of all, it all just simply works how it's meant to. Now let's go through the cons of this whole setup. Number one has to be the amount of time it takes to actually build this. When it arrives, you'll have about 15 boxes and a lot of bolts and washers. So do set aside a few good hours to actually get this set up. Luckily, once it's set up, that's the last time you'll ever have to do it. But also the reason why it takes so long to set up is because it's so adjustable. And for that reason, it kind of becomes a pro. The second thing is that there is no instruction manual printed out. You will get a QR code and an online manual to download, which is pretty easy to go through, but it's a little bit annoying going through it on the laptop. I would recommend just printing the manual out yourself. And third of all, a rig like this is very heavy. You're not going to want to move this around every single day. Once you have it set up, you kind of want to leave it there. Luckily, Track Racer does provide optional wheels that you can mount on each corner, and I'm sure with that, it will be much easier to move it around. Overall, this whole Track Racer setup is really amazing. Once you start playing it, and you put on the VR goggles, and you get into it, you really feel like you're in a real car. And thanks to the super adjustable driving position that you choose here, and the very comfortable seat, you'll be immersed in the game in no time. So is it worth buying a sim rig compared to a real car? The truth is, a real car costs an extreme amount more. Just the tires on that car cost more than this whole Track Racer TR120 frame. And those tires don't last very long, whereas this frame will last for ages. Even when a new steering wheel comes out of pedals, you can simply just switch it out. Also, I have to mention that cars break down, especially if you modify them. So sometimes the initial cost of a car can seem not so expensive, but after you start breaking things, that cost goes through the roof. At least when you're racing in games, you can't really break anything. If you just bought Gran Turismo 7 and VR2, I would highly recommend getting the TR120. It will completely change the experience of the racing game. If you guys would like to check out this track racer frame yourself, there is a link in the bio. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.